Yes, my friends, we are here. It is eSports in 30 today. It's all about owls. And I mean Overwatch League. As we take a deep dive into stage one so far, I'm your host, AJ Fry. With me today is the coach of UC Irvine's Overwatch team, Ronald Renanthera Lee. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. I mean, you know what? Like, the best part about being here is just sitting on the couch with my favorite Overwatch personality. <laughs> yeah, I I'm the biggest Overwatch personality out there. I mean, you know, like maybe not as, as high as me or anything, but it's okay. That's why I'm the expert here exactly. and you're the uh, audience surrogate. Yes, I am trapped in uh, platinum low elo hell yeah. and uh, I have a lot to learn from this man. As we all do, uh, stage one of Overwatch League is well underway, so we've got some catching up to do. Ron will help us through it. We're going to start by looking back on the first three weeks of the season before breaking down this past week's games and everything that comes with it. To get us all jazzed up, here are some of the best plays from the first three weeks. Bumper going in, going for the primal rage really aggressively, trying to get by and even get stunned. There's the shield bash, there's the kill. Got too deep, a little bit too quick. The grab not working out. Oh, Ganu! Ganu! What is this? What are they doing right now? Oh, that is interesting. That is a really. Can you get over the roof there? Oh my. Oh, oh my! my! What a play! What a grab! Tosses in the grab. They're gonna make it work. And Cruz taken out by the ensuing self destruct. Oh, 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 oh. Atlanta Rain thinking through that in the most stylish way I've ever seen for those EMPs. Lakes are, however, gonna find the first kill. MV gonna be taken down now, Roki! We saw this from him at the World Cup in Inchon. This man is out of control. Gets another shot there on the aid. Under a little bit of fire, but oh, oh, he gets him! Oh, oh. sleep dart, he didn't even hit the ground yet! It's happening! Could be at the second tick! Getting ready to come through! Kellex gonna be eliminated! Prince Sentence is out for main god, but it's gonna expire. They will be able to finish him up. There you go! Get get it. Just a couple more percent to go! Let him have it, Boston! Hexium, pop of the Primal Rage! But it does not matter! Ladies and gentlemen, history has been made! Elsa has had really good game thus far. Oh, right oh, over oh, the oh. top. Oh, and there's the mines too! Land right into him, comboed up with the Mirage! <laughs> Beautiful plays! That is a huge kill for the Philadelphia Fusion. Everybody to go oh! down. And Kermit with the headshot. Kermit with the follow up. Finally getting to show some skill here. That's what it's all about. Answering Shatter. Managed to find Sovinsu into the front. The Transcend is going to be coming down for Twilight, but Sinatra still holding onto the grab. Answering grab coming through from Vancouver. Locks him in the South Barrier Sound. It's a huge the bomb coming from John. Oh my oh. god, my kill! He does it again! That was two amazing diva bombs from the Titans in that uh, highlight reel there. Yeah, and that's definitely not easy to coordinate all the time either. And he got no. two in that, yeah, it was amazing. Especially in, in pro play, for sure. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to talk Titans just yet. They're one of the expansion teams we're going to get to eventually. we got to start with some big news that just broke last night as we were prepping for the show. Yeah. LA Valiant saying, good night, Moon. <laughs> Good night. Go to sleep. You're no longer with our team. Uh, letting go of their head coach. This is yeah. this is big, but maybe not unexpected given their track record of yeah. uh, not seven and zero, but zero and seven so far. Yeah, and they were Ooh. a playoff contender last season too. Yeah. They're doing really well, right? Um, it seems odd, I think, to most. You know, they, they had such an odd uh, season this time, but they were so successful. Uh, but you know, if we look at what happened in the preseason, they didn't really pick up many players, mm. right? Um, the only new face would be Izayaki, but he's picked up last season. He just yeah. wasn't ready to play yet so late. Um, and you know, they lost Coach Damon, who went to the Paris Eternal, and Goomba, who went to Boston Uprising. So that makes, with Moon out, the third coach um, kind of removed from their team at this point. But there's been a lot of outcry over the fact that they weren't running one of their best players, yeah, Custa. Yeah, Custa, yeah. So is this just a reaction? Like, okay, this coach doesn't know what he's doing. And I mean, even his explanation for why he wasn't running Custa was Quite that Custa's too smart for the rest of the team? Yeah, it was something along the lines of, you know, he's calling for plays that are too complex, you know, and our, the rest of the players can't keep up. But that right. seems... Like a weird thing to say. Wouldn't, wouldn't as a coach you want kind of your most intelligent player there leading the team? Yeah. Um, it, it sounds to me like there might be some mistranslation here or maybe some, some bad PR, but either way, Moon's out the picture and now they're stuck with packing 10 yeah. as their interim coach. Um, so, you know, going into stage two, brand new meta and stuff happening, I don't think things are looking too hot for the Valiant. Well, let's uh, move on to another LA based team, the Gladiators. They're doing 
better, but better. not as well <laughs> as everyone was kind of expecting for the Gladiators, sitting at three and yeah. four so far. Uh, what's going on with the Gladiators these days? So they started uh, weeks one through three with only one win. So at that time, it was one and three. And between both LA teams, we only had one win across both of them. Right. Again, both of these guys are playoff contenders. Both looked really, really strong. Um, coming off a, a veteran uh, season, they should be more cohesive and stuff. But Gladiators, I think, have a bit more of an excuse, right? Uh, Bishu, who is their flex time player, he's also the team's translator, speaking both Korean and English. Yeah. He was out because he had colitis. So poor guy, awfully yeah. sick. And, and now that he's better, it's still kind of late in stage one. He didn't have practice, so they couldn't throw him in there. Yeah. Which means they were playing, uh, you know, the three-three meta, where you play triple tank and triple support with your new Korean main tech and flex tanks in Roar and Void, and they definitely seems lost at times. You know, Roar is being hung out to dry. It seems like there was a lot of disconnect and disjunct, and they weren't really able to come together. But you know, things are looking up. I think now they're at three and four, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so they are doing better, and I think that's you know what happens when you start these new guys. They they are just getting their feet wet and kind of get warmer and warmer and more mm. uh, comfortable with the rest of the guys. So hopefully they will not be like the Valiant and won't do as bad next stage. Yeah. Like I want to see this uptrend continue. Does it seem like they they have the shot at getting into stage one uh, playoffs at this point? I mean, three and four, they got another game coming up. Yeah, I think it's doable. I, I certainly don't want to count the Gladiators out. Um, yeah. I, I think we just have to wait and see for these guys. Like, I don't want to count them out because, th again, they were so good. I don't want to harp on it too much, but it seems odd that players that made it all the way to the finals, more or less, um, the semifinals, yeah. uh, are having such a hard time just kind of on a, in a meta where cohesion is a thing. They've been together for so long. But that's happening to all the teams who were in the finals last season, it Not seems. All Not, all Not all of them. Not all of them, but the London Spitfire yeah. are also kind of struggling this season. Yeah. Some ups and downs. They're currently sitting at 3-3. What's going on with our former champions now? I mean, you know, these guys were always kind of shaky. I mean, a lot of people say London is amazing. You know, they're so good. That's why they won. But if we look at their history, they've never been incredibly dominant. They've always right. been kind of, we get the job done. Um, they get their know, wins when they need them. When they need them, exactly, yeah. which is not something another team can say. But <laughs> um, yeah, like they, when they play dive, they have such a good DPS duo and profit and bird ring. You know, they're hailed as some of the best in the league. Right. And now they're in a tank meta where cohesion is the kind of the goal, and they can't thrive off of that really aggressive chaos that they can create on these DPS heroes. And yeah. we say that sure, you know, three three is not bad, but. These guys are the champions after all. Three threes and what you're aiming for. You wouldn't be happy with that as reigning champions. But there's still time in the, the rest of the season for all these, uh, you know, uh, current yeah. standings to Less correct themselves. Less games overall, though. Only 28. So, mm. you know, three and three now. Let's say they win. They go four and three. Uh, it's doable, but you're, you're definitely not going to be, I think, having an easy track forward. Yeah, they haven't started off on the right foot. But uh, one team that has started off on the right foot and yeah. has kept going on that yeah. same footing, 7-0, and the New York Excelsior. This team is just incredibly dominant. So good. So, so good. So far ahead, along with, uh, of course, the Vancouver Titans. We'll talk yes. about them a little bit later when we get into the expansion teams. But uh, yeah, so far doing amazing. Nene on DPS, Flower uh, also on DPS. These yeah. are some standout players. Yeah. What can you tell me about this team and why are they dominating so much so far? So New York, you know, they've lost Wizard Kyung as their coach, uh, one of their assistant coaches, their analysts. So he's gone. Uh, he's joined the Washington Justice. But, you know, it doesn't seem like trimming the fat has hurt them too bad. They still have their all-star roster. And, you know, I'm sure they were really, really heartbroken after just, you know, losing in the playoffs match last season and not playing in their home city of New York. Yeah. You know, not playing in the Barclays Center. These guys must have cried for a long time, you know, must have had um, a lot of Loss of confidence, but it doesn't don't, seem... Don't tweet that, by the way, Ron Lee. These guys no, must have I, cried for a long no, time. No, don't take this out of context. Don't anyone get that out to the New York Excelsior Please, right no, now I love the New York. I, I, I need them to <laughs> like me back. They're, they were probably my favorite team in season one because, yeah. you know, they're so good. Um, the branding's nice, so sleek, you know, the nice street wear, yeah. right? But, um, you know, outside of their aesthetic, their performances have been amazing. These guys play 3-3. Um, and they weren't known as a 3-3 team either. They were a good dive team, good aggression, right? That right. Pine and Widow and stuff like that. Um, but... They're so cohesive. They're incredibly cohesive. Like, I, I, sure, they didn't make it, um, you know, all the way to finals last last season. Yeah. But um, it's amazing to watch them because it seems like everything they're doing, they're totally on the same page, same mind and body. Even when they lose, they they lose together. They all yeah they reset all quickly. quickly you know, yeah. they have a game plan. It seems like their coach has been uh, really good to them. They're on the same page, and it seems like really close, not just as as teammates, but probably as friends, because yeah. you don't get that sort of trust just from, you know 
players you're doing business with. They, they probably have like a really close connection. Well, a team that has definitely uh, got a closer connection now that they've got a win under their belts, moving from the best team in the league to the team that has just had the worst struggle in not yeah. just esports, but all, all of sports, sports ever, going 0-42, but finally getting that win. We saw it there yeah. in, the, in the highlight reel, the Shanghai Dragons. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on this team so far? It's nice to see the underdog get the, the big win yeah, like that. The under Dragons at this point. The Might as well just change the whole saying. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it was really hard not to cheer for the Dragons, right? Yeah. Now that they got the first win, I think they might have lost a few more fans, but it was a beautiful moment. You know, Gomsu, who have just come from Boston, right? He played that series with them, beat Boston, get their first win. I know that, that must have been great for him. Mm. And then Gregory, you know, shed those tears of joy and everyone yeah. captured those on their phones in the arena. And it was just, uh, everyone was lighting up Twitter saying, where were you? Were you there? I was there, you know? Uh. Um, I, it was a beautiful moment, but, uh, you know, first win is great and all, but they got to keep it going, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think at this point they're, three and four. I think they're, yep. they're done with the season. Um, but you know. They're done with the stage. The season's not, not the over season. Yet. You're right, the yeah. stage. I, I apologize. But three and four, you know, for a team that completely revamped the roster, they're supposed to be looking really, really strong. Yeah. Again, three, four, it seems like a lot of teams are, are kind of struggling to break into that upper echelon. We have so yep. many teams in the middle pack. And another team that everyone was expecting would do so well last season, would expect them to be doing even better this season, having had that experience under their belts, but they're still in that mid-range right now along with so many others. Seoul Dynasty. Yeah. Um, why are they still in this spot? Why can't they break out of it, given uh, all the talent they got on their team? Well, you know, I guess the royal family has to go, like this monarchy of <laughs> Korean excellence, right? Uh, you know, I say that, but New York and, and Vancouver are all Koreans, and they're yes. doing great. Great. So it's not it's not where they're from that's a problem. Um, and you know, all on paper, all these players look great. They don't look, uh, you know, as washed up as as you know some might think. Um, they've recently picked up some new players as well. So I think they're still working hard on fixing their issues. But you had an entire preseason to do that. I mean, at this point, cutting a few of your coaches off, having a more uh, unified direction should have really helped. They've always had the talent, just kind of missing the. Um, the cohesion, mm. um, but they had you know a couple months to to work this out. This seems like they had everything ready. People are hyping up Seoul again coming in. You're like, okay, this is their time, and another three three team. It just seems like yeah. uh, you know them and London probably have a share of similar issues, and it's unfortunate. But uh, I can't say I'm too disappointed because um, well, you know at th at the end of the day, right. I'm kind of sick of seeing the Koreans like win at every single esport. I'm waiting, you know, you to see. want to spread the victory around. Yeah, I mean, New York, I know they're all Korean, but at least we can say they're New York. You know, I can say, <laughs> hey, they represent a North American city. That's good right. enough, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the teams uh, we got to talk about, uh, all Korean, but yeah. dominating and representing Canada, yeah. the expansion teams. Who saw this coming? I, I guess we kind of did see Vancouver. A lot of people. Um, doing as well as they are, given yeah. uh, the history of this team, Runaway. Mm -hmm. uh, break it down for us, for anyone who isn't familiar with this team's uh, rich history in, sure. in Overwatch. So, Runaway, uh, they wore beautiful pink and blue sweaters. You know, they, they were um, amazingly... Uh, kind of put together and have this rich history where um, they're built by this player named Runner. He used mm -hmm. to be a player, now he's, I think, their general manager or something. But they had uh, every single championship belt in Korean contenders. They won season one and season two. And these are the guys that went on to build um, or join, I think, Vancouver, you know, Vancouver Titans. Uh, and even then, after the original gang had left, um, their kind of successors on, on the new Runaway team won season three. Mm. So they had a winning tradition coming to Overwatch League. People were like, well, you know, contenders is one thing, but now you're playing in the big leagues. How, how will you do? Will, will they be middle of the pack Koreans? Will they be top of the table? Yeah. I think it's pretty evident where they stand right now. Yeah, they are yeah. They are dominating. Don't have quite the same record as uh, New York Excels here, but they Not also yet. haven't played as many games. Yes. So we got one more to look forward to mm -hmm. in uh, the fifth week of this first stage. Uh, we got to talk about Toronto Defiant as well, sitting at five and two in third place. But the differential between second and third, with the uh, map differential, is is pretty expansive. Yeah. But Toronto Defiant defying the expectations for this team, <laughs> they were expected to be kind of maybe mid tier at best if right. they played well. And now they've, they're in third. They've clinched that playoff spot. Yeah. Why have they been able to synergize and play the way that they have? Is it just the matchups that they've been up against, or is it something else? So I definitely don't think you can blame the matchups. A lot of the teams right now outside of the very, very top and the very, very bottom are pretty damn close. They've yeah. had to fight tooth and nail in every single game. They've been able to inch them all out. I think that's a testament to uh, their coaches. Uh, his name is Bishop, his yeah. vision of you know coachability. He really came in, picked up all these players from, from Korean contenders that 
um, a lot of people, I think, underrated. You know, these guys have, outside of Roki, um, none of the players on that team have ever won a championship. So people were like, why are you picking up you know, these guys? They've, they've shown that they're mediocre, they can't win. Right. Um, but Bishop was looking past that. He said, okay, you know what? I want guys that'll listen to me, they'll kind of share my vision, my direction, um, and we'll work hard, we'll build this energy, and we'll, we'll bridge that gap. Mm. So in a way, I think they're kind of like Boston on the same principle of coachability, but um, they definitely seem like they get along better. Uh, and they've definitely shown that they can play goats, you know, past just a textbook level. At this right. point, they're they're past just learning the fundamentals. They're working on polishing, and that's why I think they're just a little bit ahead of the rest of the teams right now. Mm. Um, not quite near Vancouver or New York, but there's there's like tier one. There's like tier 1.5 with Toronto solely in it, and then <laughs> the rest. Else. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, sitting in that, the rest is another expansion team, Atlanta Reign. Uh, certainly a team with lots of fandom and support, yeah. some big star players on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about uh, Atlanta Reign, and are we going to expect them to be doing better now that they're synergizing, or is there still some trouble and uh, okay. uncertainty there? So I feel a certain way about Atlanta. A lot of people do. Yeah. You know, they're the most popular team right now on Twitch. They have the most bit count, um, largely because of their star player, Defran. And uh, Defran, for those who do not know, he's their DPS player. He's famed for playing uh, Hitscan. He's amazing on McCree and Soldier and Tracer. But he's really controversial because, you know, he has a reputation. He's done some things! Yeah, so he, th he threw a few competitive games, you know, got banned for a competitive season, wasn't allowed to participate in OWL, yeah. would stream and, like, watch, uh, you know, anime and stuff on the side monitor, and yeah. play troll picks like Torbjorn, not communicate, yeah. stuff like that. He had this I whole throw for Japan movement. understand how you continue to have an esports career after you throw a pro You just game. have to be that good. Yeah, you have to yeah, be that yes. good. Because, you yeah. know, people were like, we don't think he can necessarily do this. Is he, is he washed up? You know, he's taking a long break, but... He's pulled himself together. He's he really has. Performing, playing, yeah. uh, you know, very, very well. Holding himself to a professional attitude as of late. We'll have to see if that yes. ever changes. But, but he's not the only guy in, on Atlanta that has quite the personality. They yeah. all do. Like Dogman, who, yeah. middle of the match, would take off his headset and scream into the audience that you know his opponents are feeding. Yeah. That's that's, you know, really cool. Uh, on one hand, you know, I like seeing the players be true to themselves and genuine and have yeah. a personality. But on the other hand. Is that necessarily sportsman like? I, I don't know. I'm on the fence. But. I mean, I think inherently within esports, I mean, within all sports, there's yeah. there's some trash talking yeah. that goes on. You love them or you hate them. Yeah. You know, it's either Pog Man or Dog something else. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, Washington Justice not doing well, an expansion team that uh, I guess is living up to their low expectations. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, Owen Five, uh, obviously trying to play some weird money ball there, mm -hmm. but not doing so well so no. far. Yeah, so Wizard Young, who was you know on, on Washington Justice, the self-proclaimed typical genius, mm. you know, he says, I'm so smart, I have these analytics, I, I can foresee the future, I'm gonna make this team with um, you know, all these unknown players bring together and you'll see how good they are. Right. Um, you know, his, his core piece was bringing Jonathan or Giannis from the New York XL with him. So they started off with some good pieces, but it looks like, I don't know what happened with management or something. Maybe they went out of budget, but they picked up a lot of guys that didn't really pass the eye test. Yeah. Um, coming together, no one really had high expectations for them. People thought they weren't, you know, overwatch the caliber players necessarily. And I think the general public is more or less correct at this point, seeing as they went 0-5 and um, have some, some rough matches ahead too. Don't think they're probably going to leave the stage with the win, unfortunately. Mm. Well, uh, we, we're, uh, we need to move forward. We've got to talk some uh, teams from China now. Yeah. Uh, Hangzhou Spark, 3-4. I love the, four. love the branding, huge fan support for these guys. They're missing one of their star players as well. Yeah. So uh, are we expecting them to turn things around as we move forward into the season? So, I mean, I think, I think at this point they're finished with their games, right? They're three and four, yeah. if I recall correctly. So, yeah. you know, rest in peace, Spark. They're not going <laughs> to get it done. But, uh, you know, rumor on the street was, like, when these guys were scrimming, when they had Sauce in the guy they were missing, yeah. um, he was crazy. You know, when, with them together, they were saying, we haven't seen a team, you know, play this well and kind of be this surprising um, since Boston Uprising of season one. So I was coming into the season really excited. I love the branding. I love the anime throwout yeah. uh, kind of. Uh, aesthetic and stuff, and their posters and the socials, they're also cute. Um, and they did well. They did okay for, I think, a special team coming in without one of their star players. I think three and four um, very easily could have been five, two. A lot of the games are really, really close. Mm. Um, so once he eventually gets here, I think next stage we'll see them at full power because if, you know, really 
underpowered right now is still 3-4, they're going to be very scary when they're, you know, at the max capacity. Yeah. It's interesting how many teams have been missing their, like, star players or, yeah. or key players. Turns out it's really hard to get to America nowadays. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what's going on down no, there. definitely. Uh, we're going to wrap up talking about uh, perhaps the most fun team to watch for the fact that they are just not going in on this meta at all, the, the Chengdu Hunters. Uh, great branding there as well. Got to love yeah. the pandas. Why is their play style so different from everyone else? And is it like their, their coach just demanding them that that they stick with this DPS heavy format, or, or what are your thoughts here? Partly, I mean, I mean Coach uh, Ray, he's very intelligent. You know, he coached the Chinese team for the Overwatch World Cup last year, um, and we saw you know China pretty underrated as a region going into that, but did spectacularly well going mm. into finals and playing South Korea. Um, sure, you know, they got wiped, uh, but um, we saw that China had the talent, right? Last year, everyone was making fun of China as a region because of Shanghai's abysmal run. Right. But Chengdu, you know, they came in, uh, again, pretty underrated coming in. They were like second last beside Washington, but they're playing very well and not playing the same things everyone else is playing. Right. They, they've are really big fan favorites because they refuse to play 3-3. They mm -hmm. just play, I mean, last week they did, but all the <laughs> other weeks they were playing uh, like triple DPS, quadruple uh, DPS, yeah. um, and Amang, who's their ball player, yeah. um, you know, he, I think, plays Orisa and Hammond uh, mainly, and their actual main tank, again, stuck outside the country because of visas. He's, he's their Reinhardt and Winston player, but yeah. without him in, people were like, there's no way these guys are gonna get any wins at all. But lo and behold, Two wins, yeah. taking Vancouver almost all the way in a five-game series with um, radical strats and stuff like that. Like, how can you not cheer for the Chengdu Hunters? Yeah, it's, it's super fun to watch them play. Mm -hmm. All right, we've managed to get all caught up uh, with where we are at with OWL after three weeks of play. On the other side of these highlights, we're going to take a deeper dive into week four. Bacon Jack. Goes into Tano boosted. That's right, he's nano boosted. He's got to get the damage done. That shield does not last long. <laughs> Stellar. Whoa! Picks Roki out of the air. It's Duck Hunt. Has a Dragon Blade out, but can't find any kills. Just the one with the dash. Fan layer and Masa down as well. Oh, and Decay. The follow up kills after the ultimate. That is going to be the trick. And the Titans are back on the point. The Hunters have to act now. They bring Late Young back with B and he's back in just a moment. Oh! Just Amor is brought to a complete stop for the EMP. That's going to yield some results. And Jinwoo oh. gets himself three. That's what it looks like to get worked in the neutral by an absolute giga chat. I'm just free firing going in with that self destruct. Can they get rid of the Ryan shield? There's a the charge. They've done Ooh. it. That's a 4K. Just wait for Elsa to head across and you just grab this one. There it is. Crab on the payload. And yeah, self-destruct follow it up. That was the shot! Oh. It's beautiful! Look at this flank from Jinbu, too. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the whole team... Another one. The whole team just really knows how to play around. Oh! oh. oh. What? Oh, this is gonna hurt. There it is. Okay. They Not as bad as it could have been. And uh, Bump is gonna be a little bit out of position, but still the Titans are able to turn this around. They were ready to pounce. Jamsu gets this corner, but the sound barrier is going to make him nice and durable. And now it's going to be a transcendence here as the Spitfire try and push back. But Nuss is charged. Pinned up against the wall. The transcendence from Bidoshin is enough to keep him alive. Both Brigitte is a traded out here. 85% on the clock for the Shanghai Dragons. And the Spitfire yeah. are in disarray. And with the way this fight's going, the players still lingering around here for London. This very well may be the last fight. There's a big grab there that comes in from Diem. You just have Nuss being able to get on the point. Already a couple players and just the one left. Nas was the last chance for the Spitfire. There's no way they're getting to this point. A celebratory earth shatter from Gatsu. And in map five, the Dragons take it. So we talked about Shanghai's big win earlier, but that was earlier in the season. That big win right there against London yeah. was from this past week. Uh, yeah, big upset in mm. the final, final moments. An exciting conclusion to that game. Yeah, really, because like if you were watching that series, it would be London full holding Shanghai on a map, and then Shanghai going to the next one full holding London on a map. It was really one-sided on a map-by-map -map basis, so mm. it was really, really satisfying, I think, to go to game five, 99-99, down to the wire, and Gomsu just swinging away at them and kind of being like, okay, well, I'm the man, I'm done with this. And it's great to see Shanghai take down last season's champions as Oh, well. yeah, as like, the Zero Forty 40 team, we're yeah. getting the reigning champions, that's, all, that's <laughs> They've awesome. They've really turned things around there. Yeah. Uh, another amazing uh, match from this past week was Vancouver versus uh, Chengdu Hunters. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a lot of interesting play styles, obviously, yeah. Aming in there, uh, mixing things yeah. up, playing an amazing Ryan. Why was it yeah. such a standout match for you? 
Well, I mean, Vancouver over the course of the season have looked really dominant. They haven't yeah. really been rattled in the same way as they were in this game, where you know they were kind of caught off guard by Chengdu. They were playing, you know, triple hit scan at one point. They're whipping out the far a lot. Jinmu doing a lot of work um, and playing off of I think Amex pressure and ball. And just when uh, Vancouver thought, you know, okay, we're starting to get a hang of this whole like DPS thing, we could kind of adapt on the fly. They ran into like the most surprising standout performance by Amang on Reinhardt. He's not mm. a Reinhardt player, oh. but he really showed it to Bumper, who a lot of people are saying, man, this guy's the best Reinhardt we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, Amang just really bringing it to him, showing like, okay, you think you have a battering ram? Well, I have, what's bigger than a battering ram? Uh, I don't know, a rocket ship? Yeah, he has a rocket ship of a hammer. <laughs> I mean, there are rockets <laughs> in the back of that thing, so he yeah. was like, you know, full force, just <laughs> pounding through him, it was crazy. Uh, another uh, interesting match, not for the same reasons, but Philadelphia versus LA Valley, and Philly, a team that like should be doing much better, but yeah. seems to consistently bring themselves down to the level of the team that they are competing against. Yeah, I think they're, are they four and two? I'm not entirely sure. But Philadelphia they do is... play. Not on my list. <laughs> Unfortunately. But, okay, we, we do know that they're doing well. I believe they're 4-2 and two with Dallas. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, someone in the comments. But the thing about Philly is they should not be giving these teams at the bottom of the table a chance at all. They right. always come into these games, and the running gag is they always go to game five. Well, I mean, you can say that. It's kind of like tongue-in-cheek when they're playing teams in the middle of the standings. But Valiant, who are super, super uncoordinated, going 0-7, I don't think Philadelphia Fusion had any good reason to go to a game five. They, they coming into you know this last week, if they want to make playoffs, they cannot not get complacent. Well, uh, let's look ahead. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's look back at our player of the week. We were just talking oh, yeah. about him, Ang Amang. Yeah, this guy is uh, a radical ball. Um, he's always in the right place at the right time, always dragging the enemy's attention, always staying alive as long as he can, uh, creating that pressure and really giving his team the space and the time to really get those picks with Farah and Tracer and Sombra and things like that. Mm. I mean, everyone's playing goats at this point, and it's just so refreshing to see anything but that, like to the point where uh, people will actively boo in the Overwatch stadium when they see people in TPS come back to spawn and, spawn and switch back to tank. So uh. Chengdu really saying, okay, we're committed to this, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna take it to them, and Ameng has uh, everyone cheering, then bringing out that Ryan against Vancouver again, one yeah. of the, against Bumper of all people, and and really showing him like what what's uh, you know how to play that hero. Um, sure, they lost in the end, but. Going the going all the way to the wire with Vancouver is something to praise, and that's why Amang is my player of the week. Mm. He's fun to watch. He's really good, and I think in stage two the Chengdu Hunters will be uh, quite scary. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's uh, look uh, more ahead to uh, to the next stage, or I should say, our final week of the first stage, yeah. uh, week five, London versus Seoul. This is going to be a, an important match, yeah. obviously for London. What's on the line here? So both these teams are three and three. Yeah. Both full Korean rosters with a lot of pride on the lines. Um, I think you know both of them had really shaky starts, and this is uh, do or die for both of them. They want them like London, especially. You know they have expectations, and Seoul. Uh, they really want this redemption story and a chance to kind of say like, at least we make it through playoffs, and we can play through there and, and kind of redeem ourselves a little bit. Um, I I'm not excited to see this game. I know both teams should be good, but they haven't been playing well. Right. I want to see them both show up and have some good Overwatch for everyone to spectate. Well, what about uh, Boston versus Dallas and Philadelphia versus Paris? These are similar matches. Yes. Uh, again, Dallas and Philly, I believe, are both 4-2, um, which means they're in good standing to, to make it to playoffs here. Um, if they win their games, realistically, you know, they're in. No, no ifs or buts. Yeah. But uh, their matches aren't guaranteed. You know, um, I think if they, came, if they come to play, things will do well. You know, again, um, both teams are on an upward trajectory. Uh, so hopefully... They play well, they win, and we won't have any odd tiebreakers. We have to depend on map score because that's always a little lame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, before we wrap things up, we do have a fan question. This is from Kyle Sis on, on Twitter. He says, uh, which team's performance has been the most surprising in stage one, positive or negative? You have an opinion? You want to you wanna take this first? Oh, man. I mean, honestly, being a Defiant fan, like, my expectations were like, I'm going to root for this team because we're from Toronto. Yeah, total and homer over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they've surprised us. They're, yeah. you know, third in the league. You wouldn't yeah. expect that from a, from a new expansion team. But I think Bishop's been doing a great job coaching the team. Yeah. Obviously, having Neko return to lineup now has uh, helped a lot as well. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's my take on it. What about you, Ron? Um, I think Vancouver? I think Vancouver is super, super awesome. I, I think actually if Vancouver play well um, and they get more kind of experience to, to 
Overwatch League conditions instead of kind of like cond contenders uh, conditions. Yeah. Um, they right now are looking more dominant than New York was in their first stage. And if this trend continues, I really do think they could be potentially our next champions. That would be amazing yeah. to see. I, know, I, I mean, I'm from Toronto, but they're Canadian too, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Toronto. So you, you picked one Canadian team, I picked the other. We got our cover, you know, <laughs> we covered We're sending love across our fine there country yes. here. And on that note, that is all the time that we have for you today. But thank you so much for tuning in. Ron and I will be back next week with a special guest to break down the final week of the first stage. And tomorrow, right here on this very channel, Brody and a few friends will be breaking down the Smash Ultimate Summit. You don't want to miss that. Be sure to check out all of our new socials at Squad State on Instagram, Twitter, and of course, right here on the Twitch.